If you've been programming in Java for a while, you're definitely familiar with array lists. But what about vectors? And if you have heard of them, you were probably just told to never use them. But why? We'll show the similarities and differences between array lists and vectors with some quick live coded demos. We'll even find something that vectors do that array lists don't. So stick around and find out. I also have a full Java course available with over eight hours of exclusive video lessons covering dozens of topics. So go check it out. So first, as always, what exactly are vectors in Java? Vectors have actually been a part of Java since the very first version was released way back in the stone age of Java, also known as 1996. This is before Java even had array lists. Array lists were added in version 1.2. So all a vector is, is a collection of objects that offers convenient methods for adding, removing, and manipulating the elements inside it. It uses an array behind the scenes as its underlying data structure to hold the elements, but it will automatically grow and shrink that array as you add or remove elements. So in that way, it's more convenient to use than a regular array. Now you might be thinking, that sounds an awful lot like an array list. And you're right. On the surface, vectors act almost exactly like array lists do. So if they do pretty much exactly the same thing, why would you ever choose one over the other? How are they actually different? Why do they both exist? So let's start going over some of those differences. One of those differences is performance. Let's dive in and write some quick code to compare how long it takes to, say, add a million items to an array list versus add a million items to a vector. OK, first, let's just declare an int. We'll call it size. This is just going to hold the number of elements that we want to add to our array list and our vector. So we want to add one million items to each of those. So first, let's go ahead and declare our array list. We'll make an array list of integers. And here we're just going to call it array list equals new array list. Now we want to time exactly how long it takes to add a million elements to this array list. So first we need to capture the current time at the beginning, just before we start adding the million items. So we'll declare a long to hold the current time in millis. We'll call it start and set it equal to system dot current time millis. And now we want to add a million items to our array list. So all we're going to do is use a for loop for that. So for int i equals zero, while i is less than size. So here that's going to be a million. Then i plus plus to iterate. So each time through that for loop, we are going to add the element i, whatever i is, at that iteration in the loop to our array list. So at the end of this for loop, we should have one million items in our array list. And now that we've done that, we need to capture the system time after we've added those million elements. So long end, set that equal to system dot current time in millis. And then we just need to print out the difference between the end time and the start time to see how long it took. So we'll go ahead and print out. So we'll just say added size elements to array list colon space, and then we'll record how many milliseconds it took. So that would just be end minus start. And then we'll add on ms for milliseconds. OK, so let's go ahead and run this real quick, just to make sure it works as we expect. OK, so it took 44 milliseconds to add a million items to an array list. Now let's show how we would do that exact same thing, but using a vector instead. And it's going to look pretty similar. So to declare a vector, we just say list integer, and we'll call our test vector vector equals new vector. Now you'll notice just like an array list, we declared it using the list interface. And that's because when Java 1.2 came out with the whole fancy new collections framework with array lists and maps and sets and all kinds of stuff like that, they actually retrofitted vector to implement the list interface. So it is technically a member of the collections framework. So what we're going to do is the exact same thing we did to this array list. We're going to add a million elements to it. And it's going to be just about this exact same code. So let's go ahead and copy and paste it here. One thing we do have to change, though, is that since up here we're already declaring a start variable, uh, here we don't want to declare it again. We just want to set it to be the current time millis here right before we add everything to our vector. 
So of course, here, instead of adding to our array list, we will add each element to our vector. And the same thing goes for the end variable here. We don't want to declare it again, except now our statement here, where we print out how long it took, uh, will say added size elements to vector. And then everything else here will be the same. End minus start now will give us the total time it took to add a million items to our vector. So let's go ahead and run this a few times and see if we can see any kind of a pattern uh, with the performance between these two collections. So here we go. Okay, so it took 70 milliseconds for array list versus 126 for vector. Interesting, let's keep going, let's try again. 57 versus 195 milliseconds, that's almost four times as long for vector, let's see. So we're kind of seeing a pattern here, right? It seems pretty consistent that adding a million items to an array list is much faster, noticeably faster, than adding a million items to a vector. So is that the end of the story here? Well, not quite. Array list might have been faster here, but it has to sacrifice something to get that edge over vector in speed. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say that instead of just using a single thread like we were here, we're instead going to be operating in a multi-threaded environment. So we're going to have two threads try to add elements to an array list at the same time, and then we're gonna have two threads try to add elements to a vector at the same time. So let's keep all the code we've got and add another section down here where we're going to use a multi-threaded approach. So we'll go ahead and create another list of integers. We'll call this one multi-threaded list equals new array list. We're going to set the start time just like before to be the current time in millis. Now there are a ton of ways you can set up multiple threads in a Java program, but we're going to do a pretty quick and simple way here. Now remember, what we're going to do is create two separate threads that will run at the same time. So they're both gonna be trying to add a million items to the same list at the same time. So we're going to create a thread. We'll call this one T1 for thread one. Set it equal to a new thread. And here we're gonna get a little bit fancy and we are going to use a Lambda to declare what should happen when we kick off this thread. Now we're not gonna dive too much into lambdas in this video, but if they have always been a mystery to you, go ahead and check out my other video on lambdas here. Anyway, we're going to do a little arrow operator here, and then inside these curly braces, we can define what we want our thread to do when we kick it off. And so what is this thread gonna do? Well, it's gonna do exactly what we did before, and it's going to go through a for loop where it adds a million items to our array list. So I'll just change this to our multi-threaded list. And there we go, that's it. Now we wanna do the exact same thing with another thread. So we're gonna copy this, and all we're gonna do is change T1 to T2. Now all this does is create our two thread objects, but this code doesn't kick off those threads to actually perform these operations yet. All you have to do is call the start method on each thread. So t1.start and t2.start. So the start command will kick off that separate thread to perform the work that we've defined here and here. But we don't want to continue down in our program past this until we know that both of those threads have completed their work. And so in order to do that, we just have to call the join method on both of them. So t1.join and t2.join. So now both of our threads have completed their work. They've both added a million items to our array list. So now we need to capture the end time. So we'll just go on up here and steal this and capture the end time just like we did before. And then we'll also print out our results in a similar way but we'll say added elements in a multi-threaded way to array list. And then we'll do the exact same thing, but with a vector. So let's go ahead and copy this whole section here, paste it down below. And all we're going to do is instead of multi-threaded list, we're gonna say it's a multi-threaded vector. And instead of a new array list, of course, it's going to be a vector. And then everywhere we have a multi-threaded list, we have to change that to be multi-threaded vector. So there and there, and change this to vector in the output. And also since we've already declared these thread variables, we don't need to declare them again here, but we can reuse them. All right, so now let's go ahead and run this again 
and check out our results. So similar results to what we were seeing before. It did take a decent amount longer to add these elements in a multi-threaded way to vector than it did to add them to array list. Let's give it a couple more runs and see what it does. Okay, similar. Oh, that's interesting. So in this run, we actually got an exception. This was an array index out of bounds exception. So that's kind of strange, right? Why do we sometimes get an exception and sometimes we don't? Even worse though, here's something that's even more sinister. Let's check the actual sizes of both the multi-threaded vector and the multi-threaded list when they're done. Now, of course, we would expect them to both have 2 million elements in them every time because we have two threads that are both adding 1 million elements a piece. But let's print out the size of each of them along with our results just to verify that. So for the array list part, we will print out size is multi-threaded list dot size. Copy that. And so down here for the vector size is multi-threaded vector dot size. Let's see what we see. Okay. So now in this run, our vector does have exactly 2 million elements in it, just what we would expect. But the array list only has a little over 1.5 million elements in it. Pretty weird, right? Let's run it again and see what else happens. So here we got an exception again when it was trying to add to the array list. And we only got just over 1 million elements in our array list. And if we keep going, we see similarly wacky, unpredictable results each and every time. So in this situation, yes, the array list performs its task faster, but pretty much every time it's not actually getting all the 2 million elements that we would expect added to the array list. But the vector, even though it's taking a little bit more time, it's always successfully adding all of the elements, even with two threads running at the same time. So the big question is, why is that happening? Why do we get such unpredictable results when we try to use an array list in a multi-threaded way? Well, the reason is that operations on an array list are not synchronized. That means they're not thread safe. In other words, having multiple threads trying to operate on an array list at the same time results in completely non-deterministic wacky behavior but operations on vectors are synchronized. So you can operate on vectors with multiple threads at the same time and not run into these kinds of weird exception situations. So that of course can be useful if you're operating with multiple threads, but that thread safety comes at a performance cost. And if you're not using multiple threads, vectors take all of that extra time for no real gain at all. However, Here's a really cool thing. Let's say you still, you don't know about vectors or you don't want to use them. You just know about array lists, but you want to use an array list in a multi-threaded environment and not have this terrible, wacky, unpredictable behavior. And there actually is something you can do to make your array list operations thread safe. And it just takes one small change to your code. So back up here where we're declaring our multi-threaded list, Instead of just saying new array list, you just say collections dot synchronized list and then pass in your new array list as a parameter. This creates a wrapper around your array list. So now every time you're performing operations on your multi-threaded list, they will all automatically be synchronized just like a vector does. So now if we rerun this, we can see that it is successfully now adding all 2 million items to the array list, just exactly as the vector did. If we go ahead and run that a few more times, we can see this time the array list was just a little bit faster than the vector, but pretty comparable. Here again, almost exactly the same amount of time. And running again, performance is almost identical in a multi-threaded environment, but now we have a nice array list that doesn't randomly explode in spectacular fashion when we do something as simple as trying to add elements in two threads. Now, where does that leave us? What do we do with these vectors? The general recommendation, and this is what you'll probably hear if you snoop around on Stack Overflow or ask an experienced developer, generally, just use ArrayList. 
in the relatively rare circumstances that you need to synchronize those individual operations across a whole bunch of different threads, you can just use this synchronized list wrapper to take care of that. But the vast majority of the time, you're just working with a single thread, and so if you used a vector, you would be sacrificing all that performance for no reason. And even if you are using multiple threads, it's pretty rare that you actually need to synchronize every little individual operation, and it's more likely that you're synchronizing over uh, a few operations, like checking to see if something is in the list and then adding it or something like that. And for that, you'd have to write your own little synchronized method anyway. But vectors are still around. They've been in there since the very first version of Java. They're almost definitely not going anywhere anytime soon. But for a modern developer, they can mostly be seen as a relic of Java's past. So you can take a tour through the museum of Java history and say, oh, vectors. But just go ahead and keep using ArrayLists. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, please let me know by leaving a like and be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss each new video. Check out the course in the link down in the description if you're interested. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here with me and I'll see you next time.